Hey everyone. Today my aim is to get you to a beautiful looking fantasy map in as little time and effort as possible. For this, we're going to be using Gaia 2, which you can download for free from the Quad Spinner site. This free edition is limited to a 1K resolution output, but as you can see from this example, it still looks pretty good. In this video, I'm providing the project file for you to download. I will highlight the key nodes that you will need to change in order to get the world just how you want it. For an in-depth understanding of how this all works, check out my Mastering the Art of Gaia series, where you will learn the how and the why of my process. The file we'll be using will be available for download for free through my Discord server, which I highly encourage people to join. Here you can ping me for support and show off the results when you're done. If you don't have Discord, Drop a comment below and I will share with you the link to my blog where it will also be available once I've written it. If you're watching this and you haven't actually completed part one of this series, uh, check out the video on screen now to generate the input file we're going to need for this step. Okay, enough talking, let's head over to Gaia. Okay, and welcome to Gaia. Um, so in order to start off, we need to load in some of the files we created in the last episode. Um, that consists of the height map that we created and then also something that wasn't included in the last video, the shelf. And this is an optional step, but this is just to create that kind of shallow uh, continental shelf around the landmass to kind of create that shallower ocean look. Um, in order to do that, you need to kind of go back into Photoshop. Once we're in Photoshop, you want to identify the layer where you created the shelf. You should be able to see a black and white mask. You hold down Alt and then click on the mask preview. You see it now kind of fills up the main screen. Hold down Control A to select all and then hit Control C to copy. And then we can go to File New um, to create a new document. It should automatically have the right dimensions based on what you have in your um, so here we just hit control to paste and now we can just go to file and export um, to export this as our shelf um, i've already done that so we can head back over to gaia if you decide that you don't want to include uh, a shelf for your um your map um, all you need to do is click on this node here, this combined node, it'll have a little note beneath it. And we just need to move the blend all the way to one. And that way we're only letting through um, the, the input from the height. Okay, once we've got this loaded in, if the height looks quite strange for you, you probably need to update your terrain definition. So in order to do that, we just need to go to project, build settings, and then terrain. And here, um, I do recommend if you've followed this workflow, you're probably looking for a, a kind of a, a realistic look. Um, so you want to use the maximum um, width of 2,400 kilometers. Uh, so the width being kind of the width of one edge of the square. And then for the height, if you're including a shelf, I would use double what you would normally be thinking of your tallest mountain. Um, here I've actually maxed out all the way up to 10,000 meters, um, which because we do a sort of a 50-50 blend, I think this works, but as we do a 50-50 blend, that will then be um, 5,000 meters for the land. Um, the first thing to check out um, is going all the way to the very end. So this um, node setup is split across two tabs. We're going to go straight to the end result. So you click on graph two then click on this light X node. Um, here you can see actually we, a lot of this is underwater. This shows that we also need to update the sea level and things like that. Um, but don't worry, we'll come back to that. Um, so for this, we want to press the F key. Um, or you can right click and do lock preview. And what this does is make sure that we can now click on any other node upstream of it and we always see the output of this light X node. Um, the reason why this is quite useful is that we can now go back and alter things um, like where the rainfall is going to fall or the sea level and see what impact that will have on the final map. 
I do suggest when working like this that you turn down the preview to uh, 1000 by 1000 or maybe even 512 by 512 depending on how powerful your system is because each time you make a change it's going to have to go through all of the nodes all the way up to the end so and slow down the process if uh, you have it at 4k um, I'm going to fix this sea level first. So let's see, why are we like this? Ah, because I took away the shelf, isn't it? So if I turn this back down to 0.5, uh, here you go. You can see now that we've actually raised our land uh, back above the sea level and you can see the shelf and it's sort of different. Um, so what I wanted to focus on first uh, is the first change that I recommend making. And this is drawing the rainfall. Um, so the way I've set this node up is that this is going to control where the headwaters for the rivers are going to form. Um, it's going to affect the precipitation for the lakes. And then between these two and the output of what we're drawing itself, uh, this actually affects how we combine our kind of like, what I've called like the wet sap map, so the sort of the colors for the higher precipitation regions and the dry sap map, so the more arid regions. I do have a version of this where you can fully kind of put masks for different biomes, multiple different types of biomes. But honestly, when I look online at kind of satellite images of the Earth, the green bits are green. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> like, you can actually lose quite a bit of realism um, by having lots of different colors. It's really it makes it really hard to keep it cohesive. So. Unless you have a really specific reason to wanting like different types of green, um, I tend to stick to just having the green, for the green areas and uh, one arid map for the arid areas. Um, and it seems to give the nicest results. I won't get into it today, but I do have an alternate version where you can additionally add icy areas. And that includes snow on the land or ice caps as well in the water. Okay, so now that you kind of see like what what this does, uh, let's let's go back and actually show what it looks like to edit this. So you want to click on uh, draw rainfall, and then in the top right you can see open painter. Let's open this up, and you get greeted with this kind of preview of your world. Now it will only look like this if you've actually already drawn on it, which I have. So I'm actually gonna. Um, clear my canvas and then it goes to this kind of like brown color in this case um so the reason is that we've actually got no input right now saying there's you know there's no rain anywhere and it, i don't know it's getting confused somewhere so we need to get um a little bit of green on and now you can see where i've clicked we've got some green we've got desert everywhere else and you can even see these uh rivers forming now where um from where that rainfall is. Depending on whether this is predominantly a green continent or region or pre predominantly dry, what I tend to do is just kind of start off with a mid height. So this height bar can be interpreted as how much rain this region gets. Hardness is just kind of like how blurred do we want the edges. So I usually take the hardness all the way down. I'm going to just take this kind of like mid height color and I'm just going to paint all over. So this uh, allows you to kind of paint over and then it will update afterwards. This is probably the better way for, in terms of performance. I just let that update. Now we've got a completely green continent. Um, but you know, that's kind of a bit boring. So I tell you what, let's let's just kind of assume that we've got, um, you know, our weather systems are coming in from the east in this case. We've got these like nice mountains here and I'm just gonna put in some uh, kind of rain shadows. But to do this, uh, let's take the height all the way down and uh, decrease my brush size a little bit. I'm just going to kind of paint in um, behind these, these mountains and slowly um, start to kind of build in some of these like more deserty areas. Um, you may also want to consider um, kind of slowly incrementing the height and then just uh, extending that that rain shadow out a bit further and just kind of like blending it in that way a little bit. I'm really just using this as an opportunity to kind of 
have that creative control over, over the of your continent. For now, I'm going to go back and reload what I had before because I quite like that. Okay, and at this point, um, if you do want to increase the, your preview resolution just because you want to look at something a bit prettier, uh, you can because we're not going to be um, kind of doing that kind of workflow again. Um, but uh, okay, that looks nicer now, doesn't it? Um, okay, so yeah, so then once you've got that, I just, I guess, take a look at the, the rivers that you have. Um, you know, do you have uh, a lot, you know, too many, too few? And if you need to update those, just kind of select the rivers node and change this headwaters value. Um, you can, in, uh, by default, I keep this river value at minus four. Sometimes I find it at river mouth when it meets the sea. If you have anything other than minus four, the sediment actually builds up and then it kind of changes the shape of the coastline, which is not desirable. Um, have a look at the sea level at this point and make sure that this kind of matches nicely with the land mass shape that you were expecting. And likewise with the lakes. Um, in terms of tab one, we're done. So now we can just move on to tab two. And really your main decisions that you have to make here are essentially what colors do you want for your deserts and what colors do you want for your green regions? Um, so I've just labeled the two sap maps as just wet sap map and dry. Um, I really like 102, but um, you know, play around with different um, sap maps in the, the sort of sand um, category. Um, but yeah, play around, you know, you may see a different color scheme that works better for your world. Uh, but I'll leave it at 102 for now. Uh, likewise with the green, um, 006 is quite nice. Typically, anything that looks like a smooth gradient gives you a smooth output on your map. Anything where there's lines and contrast would then give you a more contrasty looking map. And so I'll leave it for... Zero, zero. If you want to make slight changes to how these textures are kind of like applied to the map, you can go to the texture base node here. Um, in fact, let me turn off this preview. If you're wondering why nothing's changing, that's because you need to go back to this, press F again to unlock preview. Now, when we go back to texture base, you see this kind of black and white image. In my last video, I said, um, you know, this is through simulation, not artistic talent. And this is really what I was referring to. You know, it's actually calculating the flows and the slopes and where soil is going to be and uses that to drive the color. Um, so this is what you're simulating. And you can adjust, um, for example, the flows, which are kind of creating these kind of lighter regions. Uh, if that's too much, we can just turn that down a little bit. Um, and you can see that they're a bit more subtle. And, you know, if you make one thing subtle, uh, then other aspects like the slopes and the peaks shine through a bit more. So um, don't just turn everything up to max. Um, so we now kind of very end, end to preview what that looks like. You can see that, yeah, perhaps those like flow marks are, are not so um, nice anymore. Likewise with the, the rock map. So this is going to be um, based on this slope mask that's calculated from the terrain. So again, anything in white here is going to have the, the rock map displayed. So this is kind of like meant to be your like um, kind of rocky cliff edges and things like that. Um, and you can kind of see this through here if we, we zoom in. Um, but again, feel free to update the sat map to what works for you. And the next node we'll take a look at is the color erosion node. Um, this is really down to personal preference. Um, this node has the effect of using the terrain to kind of blend the colors. So regions that are like highly sloped, um, it's kind of like washing that color down and blending them all together. So at this scale, it might not make so much sense to kind of have this color transported probably hundreds of miles. You might want the kind of more contrasty look without this kind of blending. Um, so if you don't want to have any color erosion, right click and select bypass or press B on the keyboard. Um, and then finally, uh, we want to take a look at the water color. So the water color node um, will use the height information to kind of show these different colors uh, depth so this is why we added that shelf in 
um, and it will also show the, the rivers. So you can kind of increase or decrease like how many of the rivers you see. Um, typically on a continent scale, you can't actually see rivers unless they're very large. Um, I would definitely say if you are looking to render this at 1K resolution because you're on the free version, it's probably best just to not show the rivers. Um, that will just look way wider because there's just fewer pixels to play with um, and they, they kind of over dominate. Um, you can do that by, instead of coming out from the mask here, we can change that to still water um, and then that will not have it done on the land. If you do want the rivers, then obviously just kind of for the mask. This will have the sea and the rivers. Um, but you know, feel free to change the colors. I like going for quite like a, quite a dark, um, fairly unsaturated look. Um, the default ones are really quite um, like blue. I really don't like these. So I tend to go to custom and I'll change my shallow to something kind of fairly like light gray looking almost. And then for the deep, um, again, a bit darker. Um, you can you can also obviously use the the sort of hue saturation and lightness as well to kind of influence these. Um, finally, just an optional little thing. This is just a, a little touch of realism that I like. In the previous tab, calculated where the mouths of the rivers are. Um, I was just looking at satellite images one day, as you do, and saw how you can kind of see the sediment coming out of the rivers into the sea. I thought that was quite cool. If you don't want to have that, just to select this combine node and then turn the blend down to zero and it will go. That's everything that you would need to change. I know this is quite quick, but this is by design. I want this to be just about you getting to your results nice and quickly. And then next episode, we can look at going into Blender and creating that world globe view render if you want to do that. But also the output from this light text node does a really good job in terms of actually just having a top down render of your map. I actually find that this gives you the best results. As long as you don't want anything fancy like clouds or having it on a globe or atmosphere or anything like that, just playing around with these settings gives you the highest detail output render, particularly if you're working with the indie version or the professional version. I think it should already be preset up to like output the right nodes, but if not, you just need to right click, mark for export, and then this image will be created for you. Um, you'll want to go to project, build settings, nodes, and then change um, Litex to PNG 16 and not EXR. Um, but I think this should all be set up for you if you use my uh, project file. Um, you also get, I guess, kind of for free, uh, this cartography node. Um, and this is a nice way of actually showing all of the rivers. So this is like more of your kind of Google Maps view uh, where it will show all of the rivers and the contour lines and things like that. Um, so you have this as well as your as well as your satellite app. And with that, I think we'll leave it there. Um, make sure you're subscribed and uh, so you can come back for the final step where we will take this um, output map, load it up into Blender and create those stunning globe views that we saw uh, at the intro of my last video. Um, I really hope you enjoyed a, a kind of a return to just me winging it with Gaia uh, and hopefully this was was clear. If you have any questions, please, please, please do just drop a comment below or join even better, join the Discord channel and um, I can often just load up your map for you and, and try and fix some things on my computer. Um, do reach out to me if you want a commission. Um, I do have a bit of a backlog at the moment, but um, I'm more than happy to take commissions in my opinion, fairly reasonable prices. If you get really stuck, I do take commissions, including a special discounted rate for people who have been following my tutorials and perhaps there's something that's tripping them up or perhaps their computer's struggling a little bit. Uh, if you need, I am able to kind of create 16K resolution outputs. Um, so if you've got something beautiful, got to 1K and thought, I just wanna see a little bit more, um, reach out to me and I can help. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.